Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Well, it's well into April now at the time of recording this video, so that means we're starting to lose some of the winter constellations. But there's still a few treats that we can catch before they disappear till they reappear next year. And today's subject is a great one, and that is Beta Monocerostis. Uh, quite a mouthful and also sounds like a bit of an illness. But no, this is a triple star system. Well, in actual fact, it's a quadru quadruple star system. Um, there's actually four stars, but the fourth star is a little bit too, well, a lot too faint and a lot too far away to be seen with uh, your average telescope. But it still makes a nice triple star. So uh, what, what, what I'll do is we'll have a quick look how to find it. Don't worry, it's an easy one to find this one. And uh, then I'll tell you a little bit more on how to find it and a little bit more about the star itself. Now to find Beta Monocerotis, we're going to use our old favourite, Orion. Now, Orion's unmistakable with its three stars representing the belt. Um, also, we can use Sirius, the big bright star, the dog star Sirius, uh, also a very distinctive star. This is That's the uh, multicoloured star that flashes multicoloured lights usually. Uh, and of course, the star itself, Sirius, doesn't flash multicoloured lights. It's all due to how bright Sirius is and how low it is, down it is to the horizon, giving... Uh, this lovely uh, light show that it gives us. Anyway, on to today's target. Now, if once you've found, sorry, once you've found unidentified Orion, what you want to do is look at this area of the sky here. And you'll notice that in this, this part of the sky, between Sirius and the belt, there is only two stars, really, in that part of the sky. And it's these two faint stars here. Now, if I'll just zoom in a little bit. These are the two stars here. And you're going to be, when you first go out, you may struggle to see these two little stars. Uh, but trust me, in this part of the sky, that's the only two you're really going to see. But as soon as you've got a little bit dark adapt adapted, uh, you'll, you'll see them with no problem. Now it's the left-hand star, or the most easterly one, that we that we want to concentrate on. This one right here, and that's our target. If I just zoom in a little bit and highlight it, if we can, maybe a little bit closer. There we go, Beta Monocerotis, and that's the star that we need to find and that is the triple star like i say if i just zoom out a little bit you can see it's really easy to find um because like i say once you've i identified orion and its belts and you've identified sirius then you've just got to in between that that uh, between the belt and sirius this identify this part of the sky and just then find these two little faint stars and it's the left hand one or the one most easterly and that right there is today's target beta monocerotis now when you do get this triple in the eyepiece at first it's going to look like a double you're going to definitely see two stars and uh, just keep looking maybe use averted vision that means your corner of your eye you know where you look slightly off center get the the, the main star in the center of your eyepiece and then look slightly to one side of the eyepiece don't actually look at the target if you get what i mean so say the target's there you're looking here but you can still see the target that's using averted vision and uh, it uses a a lot more sensitive area of the eye and it might you might just start seeing the two stars split now if you look very closely you're going to see that this triple is made up of a dominant white star a and then you've got two smaller bluish stars B and C. Now you may not, you may or may not, depending on the conditions, be able to see the colour difference. Um, I don't know whether I could see the colour difference the other night. I was observing this target the other night and I don't know whether I was tricking myself and, or, or tried to believe that I could see the colour, but I, I could almost certain I could see a little bit of uh, colour difference. But uh, 
This target, admittedly, would probably be better if you were to view it a little bit earlier in the year, when it's that little bit higher in the sky. Because like all targets, when they're low in the sky, you've got a lot more atmosphere to look through. And uh, you may have noticed when you look at the moon, when the moon can be quite wobbly, uh, that's just atmosphere, bad atmosphere. This can get good and, you know, you can have good nights and bad nights. Um, but this is a good test for, for the conditions, actually, when uh, not, not just beta monocerosis, uh, it, but any double star. And when you can split them, you know that you've got, um, you know, uh, good, good seeing conditions. Also a good test for the resolution of your telescope as well. Now, this is one of those targets that you can really go a little bit mad with the magnification. And in fact, I encourage it. More magnification that you can uh, put on there, the better really for this target. Um, use your Barlow lens. If you haven't got a high powered uh, eyepiece, use maybe a 10 millimeter eyepiece with a Barlow, a two times Barlow will work fine. That's definitely going to split the three. Um, other than that, just a good quality uh, high powered eyepiece like a six millimeter or even your 10 millimeter, depending on the size of your aperture of your, of your telescope. Um, remember, large aperture just doesn't mean it's more powerful. It just means it's getting more light into the telescope. And uh, so larger aperture ch telescopes, you know, you maybe get, you maybe see the three stars quite easily with just like a 10 millimeter eyepiece. But don't be afraid with this one to like um, boost up the power a bit. Uh, it, uh, it, it certainly won't hurt. But also remember that when you do increase magnification slash power of a telescope, that target is going to quickly disappear out of the field of view if you haven't got any kind of motor drive. OK, and that's the only that's the only disadvantage with using using high power. And uh, also remember, the more you magnify, the more you, when you touch the telescope, the image is going to wobble about. This is normal. Don't worry. It's just. Uh, something that we all have to cope with with entry-level telescopes but yeah don't be afraid of um, banging up that power a little bit so there you go folks another target for you to go and hunt down on the next clear night thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far don't forget to like share subscribe all the rest of it it helps the channel massively in the meantime take good care of yourselves and I will see you on the next one bye for now